So now that we've learned our identities, how to work with them, as well as the differences between implication, contrapositive, converse, and inverse, as well as how to translate English sentences using those concepts, let's go ahead and put all of this together into action by proving logical equivalence of a few different statements. So we're basically gonna put everything that we learned about manipulating compound expressions into practice now. So if you're presented with some sort of problem that you have to prove that two things are logically equivalent, there's a general strategy that you can use to approach this. So first off, if the problem that you're given is in the form of an English statement, the very first thing that you're gonna have to do is translate that into an actual logical expression. And actually, it might not be English, you might be translating either some other language or actually translating code itself into some sort of logical expression. Because only then can we apply our identities in the things that we've learned so far. After that, what we, we can do is utilize known identities. So if you've memorized some of, I, the identities that we have seen in the various tables in Rosen, and you know those, we can go ahead and just apply them as is. After that, we can apply our manipulation rules. So things like distributive and associative and commutative rules that we have to be able to manipulate our expression and try to simplify it or transform it into something else. And lastly, when all else fails, we can reduce it to ands, ors, and nots and attempt to apply our identities and our manipulation rules to try to simplify it or actually prove something about our logical equivalence. Now, of course, these steps right here are not going to be applied in this particular order. You might have to start with some known identity and then reduce it to ands, ors, and nots, and then we apply our manipulation rules, etc. So the order that we're gonna actually apply these might change depending on exactly what we're attempting to prove. So let's look at our first example. Okay, excellent. So here, it's asking us to prove that this compound statement right here is logically equivalent to that statement right here. So I don't need to do any translating to English because it's already given to me as a logical expression right here. So how am I gonna try to prove this? Well, in general, I like to start with the more complicated left-hand side right here because then I can use my identities and manipulation rules, et cetera, to be able to simplify it and hopefully end up with this right-hand side over here. So I'm gonna start with this left-hand side here. So writing this down, let's see, I don't immediately see any known identities that I can apply to this thing right here, so I'm going to go ahead and use some of my manipulation rules. So in particular, I see an and and I see a not on the outside. So I'm going to use de Morgan's law to go ahead and distribute this and inside this expression or this not inside this expression right here. So then we would get not P, de Morgan's law says I flip that and to an or, then I get a not, not Q or Q right here. So here I've used De Morgan's Law. Fantastic! Hey, I can actually now use one of my known identities. I see a double negation right here. Because of that double negation, I can rewrite this. I 
like that. So my known identity right here is double negation. And then what I see is I have an expression that only involves ors right here. And so I can use one of my manipulation rules, in particular associativity right here, to regroup these parentheses. Excellent. So here I see a Q or Q. I have a known identity and says Q or Q is logically equivalent to just Q by itself. So after using associativity, I'm going to use what's referred to as the idempotent law right here to then rewrite this thing as not P or Q. Well, not P or Q, I know that's just the definition of implication. So right here, P implies Q is logically equivalent to this expression right here. So here I've used the definition of implication or the conditional right here. And then very lastly, what I have is I know that this thing is logically equivalent to its contrapositive right here, because we spent all that time understanding the relationship between implication and contrapositive. I know that this original statement right here is logically equivalent to its contrapositive. Excellent. Fantastic. So what I've been able to do is take this general approach right here, use some of my manipulation rules, some known identities, and some definitions right here, and I've been able to prove the logical equivalence of these couple of statements right here.